Hello Internet! In the beginning of February 2023, I had the opportunity to visit Singapore for work. Unfortunately, the Changi Airport Jewel Waterfall was not running because we landed in the early morning. All the shops were just beginning to open, but the scale of the construction was jaw dropping. I was surrounded by indoor plants and flowers, and I hoped to ride the train that passed through the center. Through the grab ride to the hotel, the first impression of the city was that it felt like a mix of the nature and the city. The first hotel was located in Little India, and Singapore was very diverse in culture. Instagram, right? No, I do YouTube. A couple of co-workers found a great hand drip cafe called Apartment after we ate lunch at a friend of my dad's restaurant. Even though it's raining a bit, we decided to walk around Little India and shop. A lot of shops sold gold accessories, and we also went to a huge store called Mustafa Center. They truly have everything, starting from a waterproof bag to Zippos, but we had a hard time finding a bottle of water. When I checked out the hotel swimming pool to swim, it was still raining. But as a desert person, I enjoyed the moist weather. Around evening time, I went to a nearby mall to buy a swimsuit and headed out to the tourist attractions. The Esplanade Theatre had a great view of the Marina Bay Sands, the Merlion, and the downtown buildings. It also featured a free outdoor jazz concert. But the food there is nothing special, and shops are mostly musical shops. However, I would still recommend visiting here, especially at night, for this beautiful city lights. Just be prepared to be around a lot of tourists. And the Merlion was a bit smaller than I thought, and I believe the fireworks I saw from the distance was coming from a private fireworks show in Sentosa Island, so if you want to see fireworks, uh, try looking it up. The next morning, my co-worker and I went to Water Sports Center to experience kayak fishing. There was a line of ships to use the port, and the guide told me that the direction of the ship will tell you where the wind is coming from. And pedal kayaking for about 4 hours drained me a little bit, and the cold wow. coconut water the guide gave me literally <laughs> saved the day. We went bottom fishing, and we caught a lot of baby koopas and some leather jackets. Leather jackets wow, very rough that. to the touch, which where it got its name from. Nice. It's not as nice as mine. <laughs> Look at this. After fishing, we went to a Chinese restaurant called Putian near the hotel. The restaurant was boasting a six-year straight record of one Michelin star award. <laughs> We ordered a course meal, which included a traditional Chinese New Year ceremony in the beginning as you've seen before. And all of the menu was so good, and I recommend visiting Putian when you're in Singapore. After dinner, we plan to visit the Marina Bay Sands. The structure of the hotel is marvelous, but it started pouring rain pretty hard. We went to a cafe in MBS which had a very realistic cake and strange cold brew machine. It was the last day of the mask mandate in the train service there, 
And while my coworker is buying a mask, I broke the doorstop by kicking it too hard and my coworker spilled his half full coffee. The original purpose of visiting Singapore was for work, and the office buildings were so cool. While I was there, I was able to try almost every single snacks that I don't see in the States. The sun usually sets at around 7.30, so compared to the west coast where the sun sets at 5.30, I was so glad to have extra 2 hours of sunlight even after work. There was a fancy district called Clark Key next to Singapore River and we had a very disappointing and overpriced fried rice. We walked around Chinatown until the sunset and we went out to a rooftop bar with other co-workers. The street was full of Korean restaurants. The special gin and tonic cocktail I had was as tasty as it looked. I wanted to try out my new swim trunk that I got for only $2 USD at the mall, but I wore it only once and it was worth it. Another impression of the city is that it is very technologically advanced. The train system is great and the robots mop the floors. But even though we were there during the coldest time of the year, because of the humidity, we sometimes got drenched in our own sweat. At a different night, we visited a very fancy shopping district called Orchard Road. There was a Gucci store even in the underground level, and we were jokingly wondering what stores are going to be on the upper level floors. The price of goods, especially American brands, were generally more expensive than the US. It could be because the final price here included the tax already. The work culture in Singapore is a lot team oriented than the US. We went out for a team dinner at a great craft beer bar. There were also whiskey social nights by weekly. And futsal is a popular sports here, and I also decided to play with them. It was hard to adjust to breathing a humid air while playing football in the rain. And also, you might have seen throughout the video, I ate, ate, and ate so many good food. One thing that is definitely cheap here is the food. You can easily fill your tummy at Hawker Center or food court everywhere you can find it and it will only cost you about three to four dollar in USD. The trip ended up being extended by half a week and we had to move to a hotel closer to work and there's a lot more adventure to cover in the part two so if you enjoyed watching so far subscribe for the part two.